This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you so much for hosting me this morning. Bershus the Rosh Yeshiva, Chash Rabbeim. I want to thank my dear host, for Bobby Hager, for making this uh, weekend possible. Thank you for your gracious hospitality. And uh, it's really a great pleasure to be here in Amakam Taira. And I will have Rachmanus on you. I know it's before breakfast. So uh, the topic they asked me to speak about, they said, you know, I, I plan on going to Yeshiva. And I don't know, I'm going to give Divrei Hesairos. Um, no, no Moser. They said it should be about surgery and death and... Okay, that's what, that's what they wanted. So it's going to be a little bit out there. This is a subject. I'll tell you why I know it's a good subject. Because there's an elementary school that I speak in every year. And every year I want to speak about this. And they say, no, you can't talk about this to little kids. So they've nixed this subject every time. But I think to a masifta, this will be a very good topic. So this was a major controversy in Eretz Yisrael. Firstly, the story. And then more than the story, the Psak Halacha became... An international controversy. The story took place somewhere in America in an unidentified classroom. In a chemistry classroom. There was a kid in the class who was a brilliant kid. A very bright kid. The only thing was, he was bright academically, but socially he was a little bit not very adept. In other words, I don't want to say the word, but he was smart, but he didn't really, he wasn't one of the guys. And he got picked on. Yeah? And every day he would bring his sandwich. Let's say he brought a tuna fish sandwich. And every single day he would open up his knapsack and the sandwich was gone. It was gone. Someone in the class stole the sandwich. Day after day after day, week after week after week. And you know, if he would have been, you know, more socially adept, more with it, he would have been able to handle himself. But the guy literally fell apart. He became... It was traumatic for him that he could not eat and he didn't know what to do, but he was a brilliant kid. So he decided, he had a chap, he had an einfal. He was a brilliant chemist. So he concocted a deadly poison. And he put the poison in the sandwich. And sure enough, the very next day, he figured out who stole his sandwich when the kid in the back left started to keel over, vomit, and was about to die. Now, Yesh Garsim, some have the following edition of this story. Some say that he also concocted the antidote to the poison. And he runs over, he gives the kid the antidote, he brings the kid back to life, and now this kid who used to be, you know, a nerd, or whatever you want to call him, is the hero of the school. He saved the day. He figured out who stole the sandwich. He brought him back to life. And now the question came to Eretz Yisrael, to Hagoyin Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein. If this were to happen in a yeshiva, where there was a kid who was being picked on, or actually a similar story, was there was a guy in the dorm who had his shampoo in the shower, and somebody was stealing the shampoo. So he wanted to know, could he put a um, depilatory cream, a cream in the shampoo that makes someone's hair fall out? So that the Ganov, the next time he takes this his shampoo, he's going to make sure he never takes the shampoo again. Is it mutter to put poison in your sandwich if you know someone's going to steal the sandwich and eat the sandwich? Are you allowed to put a cream in the shampoo if you know the Ganov is going to use your shampoo and all his hair is going to fall out? This was the shaila that was brought to Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein. And Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein responded, It is not mutter. It's a mitzvah to do it. You're not permitted to do it. It is a good deed. When you go up to Shamayim after 120 years, it is a mitzvah to put poison in the sandwich. And the question is, which mitzvah is this? It's a mitzvah to put poison in the sandwich? Now, I one time gave this shir on a Shavuos night. It's a three-hour shir, but we're going to condense it now into 20 minutes. Okay? We're just going to examine a few Gemaras and Shas that might bear 
some evidence about this story. Let's start with the Gemara Baba Kama and Daf Samachtas. The Gemara says like this. It's a Gemara in Baba Kama. It's really a Mishnah in Master Shani. The Gemara says, we know Kerem Ravai. What's Kerem Ravai? Is the produce of the fourth year. So the produce of the fourth year, you're allowed to be Nene from. It's not Osir Bahano, but you have to bring it up to Yushalayim. You redeem it in Yushalayim. And then you eat it, uh, you use the money to buy food, or you eat it in Yushalayim. Now what if you have Kerem Ravai in your field? And people are now to eat Kerem Ravai. You're now to eat Kerem Ravai outside of Eretz Yisrael. So the Mishnah says, the Gemara quotes in Baba Kama, they would mark off the area, Metzayin Oisai, they would mark it off, Bekuzai Sadama, with clods of earth. Simna as a simen. Meaning, don't eat it, watch out, there are clods of earth here, don't eat it. What's the simen? Ki Adama, just like earth. Just like earth, you're allowed to get Hana from, these fruits you could get Hana if you bring it up to Yushalayim. And then the Gemara says further, Arla, who know? you know what Arla is? Right? The first three years. You're allowed to get Hanah from Arla? You're not allowed to get Hanah from Arla. So how would they mark off Arla? So the Gemara says they would mark it off with earthenware, as a simon, just like charasis, just like earthenware. You, there's no Hanah from it. If you have a, sh- a shard of earth, a shard of earthenware, you can't get Hanah from it. Uh, there's nothing you could do with it. So they would mark off the Arla with a shard of pottery, indicating just like pottery, there's not, no gain to, to be... Uh, Nene, from the pottery, likewise, you can't get Hana from the Arla. The Gemara says, what about Kvarim? What about a grave? They would put lime around it. As a simen, lime is white. Just like lime is white, there are bones over here. Says the Gemara, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. Rav Shimon Gamliel says, when do we mark off Arla, Netaravai, Kvarim? When do we do this? Bishvius in Shemitah. In a Shemitah year, we want to be careful that people don't eat the Arla, that people don't eat the Netaravai. Why? Because in a Shemitah year, somebody is entitled and authorized to go into somebody else's field and eat the produce. So you want to make sure that nobody eats the produce. However, Avo Bashar Shnei Shavua. But if it's the rest of the years of Shemitah, year one through year six, where if somebody comes into my field, what are they? They're trespassing. They don't belong there. They're a ganav. Says the Gemara, an incre- incredible principle. Says the Gemara, three words. Okay, that's, these are going to be the three words that today's shir is about. Halitehu l'rasha v'yamais. Pour it down the throat of the wicked man and let him die. Halitehu l'rasha v'yamais. Pour it down his throat and let him die. Meaning, who told him to come into my field? He's a ganav. He's trespassing. Oh, you're coming into my field? You want to be a Ganav? So the Gemara says, when we're dealing with a Ganav, not only do we not have Rachmanos, not only do we not try to stop him from eating Arla, not only do we not try to stop him from eating Netaravai, we deliberately go out of our way to make sure he's going to eat the Arla and eat the Netaravai and die. What kind of principle is this? Don't we try to bring people closer? What happened to Kirov Rechaikim? What happened to Kirov Kroivim? What happened to Loisamed Adam Rayacha? No! This man is a Ganav. He's a Rasha. He's a trespasser. Not only do we not try to stop him from doing an Avera, we want him to die, so we'll help him die. Haliteo the Rosh Vyama says Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein, this Ganav who's stealing the sandwich on a daily basis, he's a Ganav. He's a Rasha. He knows the poor chemistry student. He's not very adept socially. He knows he doesn't have a lot of friends. And every time he takes away his sandwich, he comes home and he's crying to his mother. And he says, my friends are picking on me. So the guy who takes the sandwich is a Russia. Oh, he's a Russia. We're going to help him die. Poison the sandwich and let him go. That was the Psaker of Yitzhak Zilberstein based on this Gemara and Baba Kama. You could ask, I mean, the Gemara is not an exact parallel. The Gemara doesn't say you could physically kill somebody. The Gemara doesn't say that since the person is trespassing, you could set up a booby trap and have him step into it and, and die. The Gemara just says, if someone is trespassing, you could facilitate their ability to commit an Avera by not marking off Arla and by not marking off Netaravai. But the Gemara doesn't say you could cause the person physical harm. It's just you don't have to stop him from doing an Avera. But still, says Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein, there's a principle. Halitehu l'rasha v'yamais. 
pour it down the throat of the wicked person and let him die. And I'll tell you the truth. I've given this share many times. Not until last night, until about 4.30 in the morning when I thought it was time to get up, it hit me what the svar of the Gemara is, Halitei L'Rosh Aviyamais. Let's examine another Gemara. Number three. This comes from Dar Haaretz Rabbah, Parakeh. Masa Rabbi Yeshua. There's a story. Shehishkim et Adam. Somebody came to visit Rabbi Yeshua. So Rabbi Yeshua, like you're supposed to greet a guest, he gave him to eat, he gave him to drink, he said, look, go into my attic. So you know when you have a guest, so in L.A. they put him in the, the back house, so in the back in the day, where do you put your guest? In the attic. Now how do you get from the attic to the first floor? There was a ladder. Now, if you're an innocent guest, you would think that in the middle of the night, the ladder would still be there, right? He brought him up to the roof, Lishkav, to sleep. V'natal sulami tachtav, Rabbi Yeshua took out the ladder. Because Rabbi Yeshua smelled something fishy with this guy. He figured that when Rabbi Yeshua goes to sleep, the Ganav would come, this guy might be a Ganav, and come down, and he might steal his stuff. Ma osa oisa ho'ish, what did the guy do? Taka, omad v'chatsi halayla, he got up in the middle of the night. V'natal asakelem, he took all the silver and gold in the attic. Ukrachan betalisa, he wrapped it in his talus. Vikivan shabikishan, now he's about to go down, you know, the hole in the ceiling. Figuring the ladder was there. Nafal menagag, he fell off the roof. Venizbara mafarkasoi. And he broke his neck. What happens if somebody chasashon breaks their neck? They're as good as dead. They're, they're dead. So Rabbi Shua basically killed the guy. Because the guy thought Rabbi Shua was a big rabbi. He thought at the very least what Rabbi Shua could do is leave the ladder in his place so he doesn't break his neck in the middle of the night. So in the morning, Lefshachos Rabbi Shua wakes up to wash Negevas and he sees the guy laying on the floor half dead. Amar Lord Rabbi Shua says, Reka, you empty person. This is what happens to people like you. Amar Lord, the guy said, Rabbi, I didn't think you would do such a thing. I never would have thought you would take the ladder out from under me. He said, no, you fool. You didn't know that I suspected you. You didn't know I was suspicious of you. From here, Rabbi Yeshua derived, suspect every person as if they would be a robber and be mechavid them as if they would be Ram Gamliel. You hear that? It's a very important principle. When you look at somebody, they could look like a big tzaddik and you should treat them like they're a big tzaddik. But you have to be smart also. You have to be suspect. So you basically, you honor them, you value them, you cherish them on one side. And on the other side, you never know about anybody. It doesn't matter who they are. It's called kabdeyu v'chashdeyu. Honor and suspect. Says Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein. So what do we learn from this Gemara? We learn from this Gemara, not only if somebody is a Russia and a Ganev, are you allowed to make sure and not stop them from doing an Avera, we learn from this Gemara, you could even put them in a situation where they may incur physical harm. Because in this, situ- in this case, the Ganav is on the roof, the suspected Ganav is on the roof, and Rabbi Yeshua takes away the ladder, and the guy, if he doesn't realize the ladder is taken away, he's going to fall down, he's going to crack his head open, which he did. So from this Gemara, you seem to see that if somebody's trespassing, and if somebody's a ganav, and if someone is doing the wrong thing, it's mutter not only to facilitate his doing of an avera, but you're even allowed to put him in a situation where he's going to get physical harm. So on this particular raya, Shlomo Zaman Orbach has a tshuva. You know, there's a, a case where somebody was uh, experiencing a lot of robberies. The ganav was like climbing up some rope next to the building, so they asked Rishon Mazam Norbach, are you allowed to put like a weak rope, like a string? You know, you take a knife, you wear it away somewhere, so the next time the guy climbs up the rope, he's, uh, he's going to fall down, the rope's going to snap. So he wanted to bring a raya from this Gemara that you're allowed to do something like that. Because if Rabbi Shua took away the ladder, then perhaps you'd be allowed to put a weak rope up so when the Ganav is climbing up, he's going to fall and crack his head open. So Rav Zalman said that not in every situation are you allowed to cause, put a person in, in, in a scenario where they might hurt themselves even if they're a robber. He says in this case, in Derecheret Zuta, 
The person himself is responsible for falling down to the next floor. First of all, he woke up in the middle of the night. Why is he going down to the host's floor in the middle of the night? What's he doing there? It's not his floor. It's not his area. The answer is, he's in a great bahala. He's, he's very hasty to rob. So he should have been careful. That's his own negligence. In other words, you didn't put a trap there. You didn't put a stumbling block there. You remove the ladder. The person upstairs should have been more careful. And before he goes through the hole in the, in the ceiling, he should have put his foot there, felt if there was a ladder there. And if there's no ladder, not continue on on the Geneva. So says Rav Shlomo Zaman, it's not so simple that just because your ladder removed the ladder in that case, you are allowed to put poison in the sandwich. You see the difference between putting the poison in the sandwich and removing the ladder? Removing the ladder, the Ganov should have realized there's no ladder there. So the negligence is somewhat on the part of the Ganov. Do you think that in that chemistry class, the person who stole the sandwich every day should have suspected that there was poison in the sandwich? Says of Shomazam, and there's a very big difference between the case of the um, ladder and the poison in the sandwich. The case of the poison in the sandwich, even though the Ganav should not have been stealing the sandwich, is there any reason he should have suspected that there's cyanide in the sandwich? Why should he have suspected such a thing? So Rabbi Yitzchak Zilberstein argued back, which you could maybe qu- question this somewhat, that if you're in a chemistry class, and you're dealing with this kid who is not socially adept, but is a very bright kid. And the whole day he's busy mixing, you know, different test tubes and making different concoctions. You never know what this kid could put into the sandwich. I mean, says the Rebbe Yitzhak Zilberstein, they, the Ganov should have suspected that maybe ultimately, you know, the, this kid is going to do something about the fact that a sandwich is being stolen every day. And he should have realized that that's the po- a very strong possibility that something could have been put in the sandwich. Let me share with you one more Gemara. What's the halacha? If your friend's animal is grazing, it's eating grass, and you go put down next to the animal poison, and the animal eats the poison, and the animal dies, do you need to pay the owner of the animal for the animal? Did you do anything wrong by poisoning the animal? So that's another Gemara in Baba Kama, number two. So the Gemara says like this. The Gemara says, if you look on the fourth line in number two, <laughs> If you put poison before your friend's animal, you're potter. You're potter. You don't have to pay him. You hear such a zach? You took cyanide, you put in front of Elsie the cow, Elsie was eating grass, Elsie ate the poison, Elsie went to the oil of MS, you're potter. You don't have to pay the owner for poisoning. What? Says Gemara, why not? Who told Elsie to eat it? You didn't tell Elsie to eat the poison. The cow decided to eat the poison. So it's not my problem. I happened to have put poison there. It wasn't a nice thing to do. But I, I'm not a mazik. The cow damaged itself, says the Gemara. But says the Gemara, Chayiv bedine shamayim. Even though you don't have to pay the owner, in heaven you're going to get a punishment because you were goyreim hezek to your friend's mamay. So they asked Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein, wait a second, if by putting poison in front of your friend's animal in Shamayim you're going to have to pay, then if you put poison in your friend's sandwich, maybe you're not a right seach, but aren't you going to get punishment in Shamayim? How could you say it's a mitzvah to, to poison your friend's sandwich? But we know even if you poison another animal, you're chayiv bedine Shamayim. So they brought this question to Rabbi Chaim Kenievsky. Says Rabbi Chaim, no, there's a difference between Elsie the cow and the Ganav in the chemistry class. Elsie the cow is not a Baal Bechira, doesn't have free choice. So since it doesn't have free choice, even though it could decide not to eat it, but it doesn't have a Bechira whether to eat it or not. And therefore if you poison it, even though you're putter, you're Chayiv Bedine Shamayim. But this chemistry student... He's a Baal Bechira. Who asked the chemistry student to steal the sandwich? Says Reb Chaim in that case, not only are you Pater Bedine Adam, you're Pater Bedine Shamayim. Moreover, when you poison your friend's cow, the cow needed to be there. 
This guy did not need to be in your house. Nobody asked him to be in your house. And I want to tell you an interesting thing. It says Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein, there's a Pasuk in Tehillim, Parak Ayin Gimel, Pasuk Chaf, that says an incredible principle. Hashem Be'ir Tzolomam Tivzeh. That a Ganev will be ashamed in the city that he steals. There's a principle in life that when you're about to do an Avera, or if Chazer on person does an Avera, the punishment and the retribution and the pitfall will happen in that place. In that Makayim. That Makayim is susceptible. That Makayim is very vulnerable for the person to have a downfall. You don't have to go elsewhere for the purse for Hashem to pay back. Hashem will pay back in that very place. Says Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein, the Ganav should have realized that if he's stealing his friend's sandwich every day, that sandwich is going to come back to get him. Because when you do something wrong, the Yuban Shem says you're going to steal the sandwich, beware of the sandwich. And the Ganav should have known that. You know, it hit me last night, the Lashon, Halitehu L'Rasha V'Yamais. Halitehu L'Rasha V'Yamais. Where does this come from? <coughs> Where in the, Ch- in the Chumash, in the Torah, do we have this expression? Halitehu L'Rasha V'Yamais. By Esav. Where Esav said, what? Halitehni Nam in Ha'adayim Ha'adayim Hazah. Pour down my throat from this red stuff. It's interesting. The language and the expression, Halitenu, Haliteu l'rash v'yamais. Who said, Esav said a meaning. I think that part of the svar of the Gemara is that when Yaakov had the opportunity to take the birthright, think about what he did to Esav. He ruined Esav forever. How is Yaakov allowed to steal the birthright from Esav? You know Why? Because Esav asked for it. Esav said, Halitaini na min ha'adayim ha'adam azah. Pour it down my throat! Esav was asking for trouble. When the Russia asks for trouble, by all means, you could accede to his request. When this, the Gemara is saying, that when somebody trespasses into someone else's property, they're asking for trouble. They didn't articulate it. They didn't say it. But they're basically asking, if I'm coming into your possession, please do me harm. The same way Asa was asking for problems, was asking for trouble, if someone is going to someone else's possession, in someone else's domain, they're asking for trouble. If someone steals somebody else's sandwich, they're asking for trouble. They're asking for the sandwich to harm them. But we have to understand, if there's such a principle... Now, when somebody does the wrong thing, they're asking for trouble. Then their patterns in life, their patterns for bad and their patterns for good. You know, the way the world works is that whenever, whatever direction a person wants to take, the Rebbein Shalom helps them go in that direction. The Medrash tells us there was a guy, there was a drunkard, there was an alcoholic who would drink cases and cases of alcohol every day. And the family got fed up. So the brothers decided that they're going to take their father and remove him from the house and plant him in the cemetery. And they opened up a grave and they dug open the grave and they put the father drunk in the grave. They figured they can't handle it anymore. The father was selling everything in the house. The father was selling the living room furniture. So the mother said, just get rid of him. And the father is laying there in the grave and the Medrash tells us a story that a caravan of an army was passing by and as they're traveling through, they get word that they're about to be attacked. The, Gemara, the, the Medrash says they leave the entire truckload of alcohol in the cemetery and it all came pouring down into the man's grave and he's lying there in the grave and he's surrounded by alcohol and he's saying to himself, wow, Gan Eden is better than I thought. That's the story, that's the Medrash. Says Rabbi Yo Dessler, what do you learn from the Medrash? That in whatever direction a person wants to go, the Rebbeinu Shalom takes you in that direction. You want alcohol? 
Hashem will give you siyata deshmaya lamala minateva that you could be in a cemetery and the ca- the tavern will come into your grave. Because the Rebbeinu Shalom helps a person, leads a person along his desired journey. You want to hurt someone with a sandwich, the sandwich will hurt you. You want alcohol, it will run after you. But mida toiva maruba. The attribute of goodness is better, which means that if a person sincerely applies themselves to their learning, to your shamayim, to midois toivais, in a yeshiva, in a seat, in a makayim, then you won't be successful elsewhere, you'll be successful in that makayim, in that seat, with that gemara. That's siyata deshmaya, that's heavenly assistance. But there are patterns in this world. A person has to choose what pattern they want to take, what direction they want to take, where they want the Rebbein Shalom to take them. A person wants to go lara, habole tame, paiskunlai. The Rebbein Shalom assists, the Rebbein Shalom facilitates. On the other hand, habole taher. If somebody applies themselves for Torah, now the Gemara says that Rebbe, um, Rabbi Kiva's wife told him, if you go learn in yeshiva, if you go learn in yeshiva, then uh, I'll marry you. And uh, Rabbi Kiva's father-in-law made a nether, I'm not giving you a penny. I'm not giving you a penny. So there's a discussion, there's a discussion that uh, when Rabbi Kiva came back and he was the God of Hadar, so his father-in-law wanted to be matter the nether. How can you matter the nether? Well, I never realized that you would have been an Adam Gadol. So Toysva says over there, Toysu says in Adarim, the Rans writes in Adarim, that if a person goes to yeshiva and applies themselves properly, then in all likelihood, they'll become an Adam Gadol, they'll become a great person. But you have to apply yourself. You have to put in the effort. You have to chart your course. You have to make your direction. And if a person makes their direction, the Rav Hashem will take your hand, elevate a person, raise a person up, and give a person... Siata Deshmaya, Lamala Menateva. Thank you so much for hosting me this morning. We want to wish all of you Bracha Vahatzlacha and tremendous Siata Deshmaya in all of your endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Bracha to you. Okay. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.